Hey, welcome to this video where I'm going to teach you how to calculate the value of a bond issued at a premium using the BA2 Plus from Texas Instruments. First thing you're going to need is to get this calculator to get the BA2 Plus. I don't use the HP12C. This is our classic bond example here. The bond has a face value. It has a coupon rate. That's the rate right there. And then down here, these are all the coupons that used to be clipped off back in the day and then sent back in. You could have any number of structures to these contracts. These bonds are basically contracts that are bought and sold. They're standardized. And there's a couple features to them that, that change. The face value and the coupon rate, the duration, and how many periods uh, of payments there are. As a result, we're going to do a simple example of a bond issued at a premium. So we've gone over, there's examples posted of bonds issued at a par, bonds issued at a discount, bonds issued at a premium. This is a situation where somebody goes to the market, they have an implied interest rate in the bond where the coupon payments equal a certain amount. In this example, the coupon rate's 10%. And what happens is the market looks at the person, the, the organization that's given the bond and says, do you know what? You're actually giving a rate that's higher than what we'd plan to give somebody like you um, because you're less risky. And because you're less risky, we're actually going to give you more money for those bonds. They're worth more. So we're going to give you more because you're not as risky as another organization. The example we used in a prior uh, video was Amazon right now. It's the coronavirus. We're all stuck at home. Amazon stock is actually doing okay. The rest of the market's down like 40%. If we actually look at the at Amazon stock price for the year to date, Amazon stock price is actually up. That's what the green means there. Uh, the stock is up. And that's because the market looks at their stock and says, you know what? This company is actually going to do okay during this period. People are going to have to buy a lot online, and Amazon has one of the best networks for doing that. Because Amazon has less risk, they are going to be issued at a premium, uh, possibly. They could have a stated rate, and the market could say, do you know what? You're going to actually going to fare better than your stated rate on the bond. We might actually charge you less. So they'll pay up the bond. They'll price up the bond in the bidding of the market. So the interest rate, the required interest rate on a company like that would be lower. So it's paying more and it has a lower required rate. So that's going to be in more demand. So the market's going to pay more and buy those up to make the actual rate of the bond go to 8% and not the coupon rate or the par rate, which we did in two other videos. So let's walk through the parts of an example of a bond issued at a premium. So the principal amount, the principal amount equals the future value, FV in our calculator, all right? That's the future value. Coupon interest rate is 10% and it's an annual payment, annual payment. All right, so the 10%, we take that 10%, we multiply it by the 1,000 and we get $100. That $100 represents the fixed coupon, pay, coupon, coupon, coupon payment that will be made every year. So annual payment means it's once at one payment per year, one payment per year. Maturity is five years. So that means N equals five. And then the market rate, this is the market rate yield or effective rate. The return the market demands on the bond is 8%. What that means is that the market requires an interest rate per year on this type of risky investment about 8%. That's the market rate. All right. We have everything we need now. All we have to do is go get our calculator. We pull up our calculator and we do what we always do before we start a problem. We clear everything out, clear time value of money here. And then we do second clear work and everything's cleared out. We also want to check to make sure our payments are at the end of the period. If you want to change those, you go second uh, enter and it'll make it set it right there and it'll change it to beginning. We want to keep it at end. So second there, second, and you don't want set, you want quit. So you get out of it. So there it says end of period, payments at the end of the year, payments quit. It doesn't say that it's at the end of the period. You can assume that it's at the end of the period for the problems I do. Uh, usually it'll be explicit in, in say beginning or end of period. And if it doesn't, assume end. So let's start plugging it in. Just like before, 1,000 is our future value. Our payment is 100. Our interest rate per year, this I over Y right there is eight. So we hit eight and then we press enter. 
And then the N, we have a number of the number of periods is five, uh, number of payments per year. Uh, payments over the life of the contract is five. So N equals five. That's the payments over the life of the contract. And then we need to check the payments per year is equal to one. If it has a different number there, you press you press whatever the number is, uh, and you know you don't want you don't want twenty one. So you go second payment. And if it doesn't say one, you hit one, and then you press enter, and it'll make it save. You don't have to do second enter. You just press one and enter, and it'll set it to one. You go second quit. All right, now you're done. And all you have to do is go to compute present value, and voila, we have our number. All right, so this is the present value of those cash flows, and it's worth more than a thousand. It's worth one thousand and about eighty dollars. Does that make sense? It does. And the reason why it makes sense is because the market, these bonds went out with a face value of a thousand, and it's paying out more than what the market demands for this type of risky asset. So as a result, the market has bid it up. They've priced it up because people are like, oh yeah, 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 I want to buy that. And they sell it for more. And in this case, they sold it for $80 more. So what does that look like? Well, this is, so we put here the, the present value equals 1,080, all right? And that's what we have. So present value equals 1,080. So what are the journal entries for this? As we think about this bond, well, we start with the first entry, the journal entry on issuance. We're going to have a debit of cash. We got cash, right? We, we issued debt. We got cash of $1,080. And we're going to have this liability here of bond payable of $1,000 flat. And you'll notice, so this is the first journal entry. The journal entry here is going to be debit cash, $1,000. And eighty dollars, we're going to have a credit of liabilities. Let me finish off that C there. Credit of liabilities of bonds payable of one thousand, and then we're going to have another credit. And we know it's another credit because our debits don't equal our credits here. And we know it's going to be for eighty dollars. What should we call it? Well, you recall that we have when its bonds are issued at a discount, we usually record a debit entry for a discount on bonds payable. Since this is a premium on bonds payable. Let's call it a premium account. That sounds good. So premium, I'm gonna write pre on bond payable. We're gonna run out a lot of room here, so I'm abbreviating. So this, there's gonna be a premium, and that's gonna be for $80. And there's gonna be a little T account here that we keep to our side, premium on bond payable. And that's gonna maintain credit balance of 80. So this is what we do on issuance. So let's do the first journal entry on the first payment. The coupon payment's made, somebody cuts it off, cuts off that little ticket at the bottom and sends it in. That's not what's done now, but that's what used to be done back in the day. When that coupon payment is go goes in, we know we have to pay cash. So let's start with the cash and the cash amount. And let's just put everything up here so we can see it plain as day. Present value, 1,080 is what we have. The future payment is 1,000. The coupon payment equals 100. And then the interest rate per year equals 8%. Let's do this journal entry. What's our debit gonna be? Well, we know we're gonna have an interest expense. So we have cash and we're gonna have an interest expense. So we're gonna have a debit to interest expense and we're gonna have a credit to cash of 100. So we have interest expense. We don't know that yet. We're gonna have credit to cash of 100. Well, how do we calculate the interest expense? Well, if you recall in the last video, what we did with our discount on bond, our contra liability, our discount on bond payable is we netted bond payable in that discount. And then we multiplied that by whatever the market rate of interest is. Well, as you can imagine, we do something very similar for bonds payable and then the premium on bonds payable. So the premium bond equals 80 and it is a credit and it's a credit because it is a premium. It's not, it's not, it doesn't maintain a debit, debit balance. So the total amount here is actually 1,080 that we have to multiply by 0 0.08. And we get 86. It's really it's really 86.4, but we, we're rounding down. So it's 86. So that is the interest expense. The interest expense is $86. So we're gonna put that up here, 86. You'll notice this 86 doesn't balance with the cash that we distributed. We need another debit. And can you imagine what that other debit is? I bet you can guess it's premium. 
we're gonna amortize this premium on bonds payable. And it's gonna be the net difference between these two. In this case, it's 14. So 14 is the amount here, and we're gonna write premium on pay. So that is the first entry for payment one. So that's the first entry for payment one. Let's do payment two. That's payment one. This was issue. And we're going to do payment two. So payment two, it's going to be same. It's going to be cash. Oh, I didn't put the hundred up here. I got to put the hundy. Put the hundred up there. Uh, and we have another hundred here. We're going to have another amortization of our premium on bonds payable. And then we're going to have interest expense. And it's going to be very similar to the entry above. And we're going to do this as, and then we're going to do payment two. We have two debits and then a credit. Our credit is going to be for cash of 100. Our debit is going to be premium on bonds payable and then interest expense, just like we have above. Now our interest expense is going to be different on this second payment. This, this second payment, right? Payment is going to have a different interest expense. Why? Because you'll notice premium on bonds payable, we wrote that account down by 14. So that means we have balance is 66 on this second year. So that 66 is what we're going to add to the 1000. So it becomes 1000 just like it was up here, instead of 1,080, it's gonna be 1,066 times 0 0.08. We get something close to 85 is our interest expense. We're gonna put 85 up here. And then 85 net 100 is 15. And that is our, no, our new amortization amount of 15 from payment two. This is payment one, this is payment two. So let's do payment three. We're gonna have interest expense. We're gonna have premium on bonds. Uh, that premium that we wrote off from before was 15. And then we have cash of 100. All right, so we have cash of 100. We know what that is. Oh, I'm gonna have to do this one over here. So we got credit of cash of 100, all right? And then we're gonna have two debits. I apologize for the teeny writing, debit and debit. But you know what it is, it's gonna be interest expense, interest expense, and then premium on our bond payable. And so how do we calculate the interest expense? Well, that 15 net 66, so we had that balance of 66 that went down by 15, so the new balance is 51, that's 51. So to calculate the interest expense for payment three here, we have to do 1,051 times 0 0.08, which equals 84. So interest expense for that period is gonna be $84. The premium on bonds payable is gonna be 16, 16. And so this is gonna be written off by 16 in this third payment. So how does that map on here? Well, we're gonna have 16 here. We're gonna have interest expense of 84. And that's our entry for the third period. So let's do the fourth and fifth. Uh, we're gonna have the same debits and credits as before, debit, debit, credit here. And the debit's gonna be interest expense. And it's gonna be premium on bonds payable. And it's gonna be cash, just like before. The only entry we know now without doing any calculation is the cash is leaving 400 as a credit. That's what always happens. Uh, because of the coupon, all right? And then we'll do payment five down here. Well, we have to figure out what our net premium on bonds payable is. So we take 51 minus 16 and we get a balance of 35. So the premium on bonds payable is 30, it has a balance of 35 for this period four right here. So what we need to do is we need to take that 35 at a thousand, just like we did before. And so, 1,035 times the market rate, which is 0 0.08. And that equals 82.8, we're gonna call it 83. So interest expense is $83. So our interest expense in this payment period is $83. And what I don't want you to do is I don't want you to think, oh, you're, you're probably trying to look for patterns and not having to do this part of the calculation right here. Don't do that, don't. I know what you're trying to do, don't. Don't, no, don't, don't, don't do it. All right, you're gonna screw yourself up. And the reason why is the way you have to do this, I've made this problem pretty easy and you might look at it and see a pattern as, oh, 
It's going down by a dollar every year. I could have just subtracted a dollar every year and gotten there. No, I'm making the problem easy. And it just so happens that that's where it's rounding out to. All right. So when you see calculations and problems like this, this is the way to go for it when you actually are mapping out what the payments are going to be. So this is payment four, it's $83, premium on bonds of 17, so 83 minus 100, and of course, cash of 100. And so we got to put the, so we have interest expense of 83 as the debit, bonds, uh, premium on bonds payable is going to amortize by 17. We'll take a 17 off here, cash of 100. Our last journal entry. We're going to have a debit of interest expense. We're going to also have another debit of premium on our bonds payable. And then we know we're going to have a credit. We are going to have to pay cash, but we have another debit here. We get to celebrate the fact that we paid off our bonds payable. And then we're going to have a credit here. And the credit we're going to have is cash. And we know already how much cash we're going to give. It's 100 from the coupon payment, 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 payment plus the 1,000 from the future value, this right here. Now we have to figure out, well, what is the rest of this entry here? The interest expense, the calculation of that, well, oh, we do know what the bonds payable will be, all right? So the bonds payable is gonna be 1,000. We can write that down. So we've got this done and we've got this done. We just have to fight, figure out the interest expense and premium on bonds payable. Well, it's gonna be the net difference, whatever's left over in this account between these two, and that's 18. So 18 is the interest expense, and it's gonna leave the account, the premium on bonds payable is gonna be written off. So it's 18, all right? So that's what it is. I just backed it out, but we'll get there. We could get there another way too. If we did 17 net 35, we'd have 18 left in here. 17 minus 35 is 18. And we know we're gonna have to write that off because we're getting rid of the bond, but the interest expense, would have been 1,018 times 0 0.08, which if we do, comes out to about 82. So interest expense in that final period is 82. So interest expense is 82. 82 plus 18 is 100, which matches the coupon payment that we have. Uh, just like we have 83 plus 17 equals 100 here for debits equaling credits in period four. Period five, we also have that bond payable that goes out, uh, gets written off because it was a five-year bond. And then cash, the total cash distributed is the thousand from the bond payable and then the hundred dollars from the coupon payment. So how that shows up here on the final period is interest expense is debited, just like in our journal entry of 82. The premium on bonds is 18, period of bonds payable. I had to erase it to make some more room. Premium on bonds payable. And then we're also going to have to write off our bonds payable. Bond payable of 1000 That's another debit we have, just like we have down here. So we have our interest expense, premium on bonds payable, bonds payable being written off. And then we're going to have our credit of cash for 1100 and that's what we're going to have in that fifth period. That's the journal entry for period number five and how it maps on to our income statement and balance sheet. And that's how you calculate the journal entries and the present value of the discounted cash flows from a bond for a bond that is issued at a premium. Remember, the rate goes down when the bond is issued at a premium. All right. So the market rate will always be lower than the coupon rate if it's issued at a premium. The market rate will always be higher than the coupon if it's issued at a discount. See you in the next video.